Hi guys, welcome to Baking with Miss or Baking for Kids with Miss Jen. That's me. You might have seen me at the main branch of the big building of the Gail Borden Library. And I'm here today to talk to you. We had a special holiday last week. Does anyone know what holiday we had? You might have heard about it on the news. If you came into um, our building, we have a craft associated with it and some coloring pages. It was Earth Day last week. So today we are going to make some Planet Earth, we love our planet, Earth Day cookies. So these cookies, um, they're not complicated, but there's quite a few steps. It's simple steps, but there's quite a few steps. So I want to get started with the steps and get the cookies going. And then when they're baking, I have some cute books I want to share with you guys, at least portions of. There's so many good books. Um, we'll just look at a couple different ones, different pieces of them. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so ingredients, and I have everything kind of over here to the side. We need a stick of butter and your recipe will say eight tablespoons. So let me give you a hint. Eight tablespoons is a stick of butter. It says unsalted, but I think salted is fine too. Uh, you need one egg, you need sugar, flour, um, vanilla extract, baking powder, and salt, a pinch of salt, and food coloring. Uh, interesting thing about the food coloring. So food coloring, maybe you guys used some of it recently if you dyed Easter eggs, is usually liquidy in these little droppers. There's also food gel. Today I'm using food gel. It just is a little bit thicker and creates a little bit darker, but either one would work fine. Um, the point is you, when we go to color the dough, we want a blue dough and a green dough to make up the planet Earth. So you want them to not be both super dark or both super light because you want them to notice the blue from the green. So, and I will be having to use my stand mixer once in a while. That's a couple of the things you need, some measuring cups. Um, I'm using my one cup today and measuring spoons, uh, the one teaspoon and the quarter. I have several butter knives because I use, like to use them to um, level off my ingredients. And then when we're dealing with the blue dough and the green dough, kind of keep everything separate. Um, and then like a scraper or a spoon. And then I have a spare bowl. We have the big mixing bowl, but I have a spare bowl for half the dough and a little tiny bowl because we're going to roll our cookies in sugar before we bake them in the oven. All right, so we're going to get started here. So first thing, and I'm going to be cheating here and looking at my um, recipe. So I pre-lit my oven to 350 already. And I, oh, I also have a cookie sheet ready. This recipe makes, um, I think about two dozen cookies. Today for purposes of time, I'm only gonna show you how to do a couple and pop them in the oven because it takes quite a while to, to roll them out and you'll see when we go to do it. But um, at home, obviously, once you've seen it, um, you can do it yourself and do them all at once. So, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do and the main reason we're using the mixer is to cream butter and sugar together. So that means we're gonna make it super light and fluffy because butter is a solid, right? And um, we're gonna add our sugar and that's gonna be our starting point. So we need one cup of sugar plus a little bit extra to roll the cookies in. Remember I mentioned we're gonna be rolling the cookies in the dough, the dough and the sugar later. So let me put my stick of butter in there. Okay, let me grab a paper towel. Because we are gonna be making a mess a little bit, but that's what baking is all about. Okay, and then my sugar. So we are gonna get one cup of sugar to mix with the butter. So let me get that first. Really reach down in there. We get a cup of sugar. What these are gonna taste like, and you guys know if you've seen the baking before, Miss Jen loves chocolate. It's my favorite thing in the world. This is more of a sugar cookie, but it's quite tasty. So even though it's not chocolate, it's still good. Okay, so then I'm gonna just take a little bit, because picture, like I said, we're gonna roll um, the dough in it. So here's my glass container, and I'm just pouring like a little tiny bit of sugar that we can roll the dough balls in when we're ready for that step. Okay, sugar is done. So the recipe says beat the butter and one cup of sugar to light and fluffy. So I'm gonna, um, you, I have my stand mixer. You might have a hand mixer. That would be okay, I think. You just need a big bowl, like a deep enough bowl so that the dough doesn't go flying everywhere. And as you're doing this at home, if you do, whether you're doing it now with me or later, 
Um, the dough is kind of dry, or it seems dry. It doesn't taste dry at the end, but it's almost like making kind of a slightly dryish Play-Doh-ish texture. So don't be alarmed if it seems that way. The first time I made these, I was a little worried, but it turned out fine. Okay, so this is going to be loud for one second, a couple, maybe a minute while I um, do the stuff with the butter, sugar and the butter. Once I could see that the sugar wasn't going to go flying everywhere and the butter sticking to it, I'm turning up the speed because I want to get this nice like paste consistency, almost like old school um, paste or glue when you had it when you were a kid. I'm going to give it maybe 10 more seconds. It's all nice and combined. We want it nice and fluffy and soft. And I'll show you. So now it's all together. Okay, so we have our butter and sugar combined, and then we're gonna add the egg. So I have one egg. So right now what we're doing, and this is pretty standard with a lot of ingredients that are cake-like, brownies, cakes, cookies, you do your, what they call kind of the wet ingredients, and even though butter is a solid form, it's an oil, right, it's a fat. So that's considered a wet ingredient. And then, um, egg and vanilla, anything that's wet first. So we've got the egg and then my vanilla, which I believe is one teaspoon. Let me check. Yep. So one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Which is quite a bit, but to get that nice like sugar cookie flavor, that's what you need. So we're done with the vanilla. Okay, so just sugar, the, the egg, vanilla. Okay, and then I'm gonna have to put it back in the, making sure I got everything in here. Looks good. I'm gonna put it back on the mixer, uh, again, just to get all the stuff combined. So I'm gonna put it back under here. Put my mixer back on. Here we go. I'm going to put it back on. Again, yeah, we're just kind of getting the egg and the um, vanilla incorporated and mixed in the whole thing so we get that nice vanilla flavor, like sugar, sugar cookie vanilla flavor throughout. And it's going to look much more like a cake batter in a second when I show you. wanting to fall off the wheel. There we go. So now it's like a pretty yellow color and it really kind of looks like cake batter. Okay. So I think that's all of our wet ingredients that we've got so far. Okay, so we've done all of that. So now we're going to add our dry ingredients. So that means flour, baking, soda and salt. Okay, so definitely a lot of flour in this. There's two cups. So I'm gonna get my one cup measuring cup again. And use my fork to level it. So I've scooped a lot, way more than I need, right? And then I just use the sharp edge of the knife. Well, I mean, it's a butter knife, it's not that sharp. But to level that out, I'm gonna put it in. Second out of the way. So there's one. And then we're doing our second cup of flour. There's the flour. Now we're all done with the flour. I'm going to put that off to the side. So then it's the baking powder and salt. And we only need 
Ooh, okay, two teaspoons of baking powder. That's quite a bit again, actually. So you'll get a nice rise or fluffiness um, from the cookies. A lot of us are used to the orange box, the baking soda. It is not the same thing. So if it calls for baking powder, please make sure that you have baking powder for your recipe. So there's one, and then we'll do one more. A lot of baking powder cans are really nice because they have like a built-in um, little thing right here to help you level your teaspoon nugget. All right, now we're done with the baking powder. I like to move the ingredients that I'm done with out of the way because it's less and less cluttered then as you go. Um, that's just something I like to do. And then the salt, it is a quarter teaspoon of salt. They say kosher. Um, I use table. I've like substituted salts all the time. I don't really notice a big deal with it. So, okay. And the salt is done. All right. So I'm going to turn on the mixer again, and we're going to combine our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. My bowl is stable here. There. I'm going to let it kind of go very slow for a minute because even more so than the sugar, flour is very powdery, right guys? Flour and baking powder are both very powdery. So if you turn it on high and it's not ready, it's going to, you're going to see a little dust cloud. So we're going to have our own Earth Day like mini volcano explosion, which if you've ever seen steam, family steam, you've noticed some messiness before, but that's not really what we want here. So. It's already started to combine and look crumbly. I'll show you in one second. And then what I'm gonna do is cut the dough in half. So we have our um, green dough and our blue dough and we'll go from there. You can hear the mixer working a little harder too. One tip I have too is, um, well, two things. If you're going, when you get to the stage where you're adding your dry ingredients, you want to stir that as little as possible. So if you have your wet, and you have your dry and you're mixing them, you need to, of course, incorporate or mix all the dry with your wet ingredients. So you don't wanna see any powders or anything like that. But once you feel certain that it has and you just kind of gently stirring and mixing and folding, stop. Because the more you work um, flour, flour is a leavening agent. It's like made from wheat and stuff. It'll get tough. So if you want like more um, moist and non-chewy cookies or brownies or whatever, you don't wanna over mix your dry ingredients. And the other thing um, I heard a long time ago works really well is if you ever add something solid to a dough. So let's say you made brownies, but you want to add um, chocolate chips in them, or you're making pancakes and you want to add fruit like blueberries or um, maybe chocolate chips, which who doesn't love blueberry chocolate chip pancakes? Put your thing you're adding in a small bowl and just pour a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of flour and like toss it with your hands. And it helps them from sinking to the bottom. Of whatever you're making and they kind of stay more evenly throughout okay but let's see what we've got here so the dough is ready but it's not the colors that we need but i'll show you guys how it looks all right here is our dough so now i'm going to and miss jen i'll admit up front is a horrible estimator but i'm going to try to attempt to put about half the dough in my um, spare bowl that I told you guys to get because we're going to do the blue and then the green separately and we don't want to mix it because if we mix the blue and green instead of like earth cookies we'll have like aquamarine cookies so I mean that could be like ocean cookies or something but it's not really the earth day cookies we're going for so let me put about half the dough in my white bowl here so I'm going to pour some of this in here There's a little flour on the sides of my bowl, and that's fine. That's not a big deal. And we're not going to be mixing the color in this white bowl. I'm just moving it out of the path of, I guess well, maybe we'll start with the green. So this is going to be the green dough in my bowl here. So we're about to add some green food coloring to it. Um, and we want to make sure that we keep this other dough separate so that we can then color that. Okay, so here we go. This is half of the dough in the bowl, and I'm going to add my food coloring, my food gel. I think I said I'm going to go with green first. Okay, here's the other thing. This food gel, I'm rolling up my sleeves and hoping, don't make a big mess, 
um, is very dark color. You're, if I get any on my hands, I'll show you. What I've seen is if you wash it right away, it does come out quickly and it won't hurt you. It's food safe. So it's not like, you know, it's dangerous if you ingest it or have it on your skin. Um, but if you're looking to avoid mask parents, this might be the one step, especially gel, but food coloring too, it's up to you. Um, you want to be a little bit careful. Okay. So I also learned a little goes a long way. So this is leaf green food gel. And you can get something like this at any kind of like either baking store, maybe some of the major supermarkets or like a crafting baking store. Um, you know, some of the chains that are out there. So it looks really thick. That is green. It doesn't really look like it on the camera. It doesn't even look like it with my eye. It looks like black basically, but it's green. So I'm going to take a little bit of this more here. And then I'm going to set it aside for a second and start running the mixer. I did pretty good not getting it all over myself. And let's see when it combines how green it looks. The nice thing is you can always add a little more if you're not super happy with the color. So. And you want to give it a little time to distribute throughout. So again, you're going to have to end up mixing the dough a little bit. So it's good to do that first step, mix it as little as possible. All right, I'm going to show you guys. Here's the green. I'm going to add just a teeny bit, and hopefully I don't regret that. But I mean, whatever, it's baking, right? It's for fun. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, just a tiny, tiny bit more of the green. We'll see what that does. It's probably going to make it much darker, but we'll see. Okay. And if it does, that's okay. I'm give it a little bit more here. Luckily, um, this dough is not too loud, so you guys can hopefully hear me over the mixer as it's going. The, um, once we've got the two doughs made, then we're just following some simple steps um, to combine them. And you really don't work the dough a lot again to make it look like a plant instead of a big uniform aquamarine blob. Okay, so I feel like it got a little darker. I'll show you guys. I have to get all the dough off because I'm going to have to really quickly, you could wash it. I'm not going to wash it. Um, but... I need to um, get the green out of the bowl and off the heater. So, okay, that's a little greener. So there's our green dough. And just for the temporary, I'm going to dump it on my cookie sheet. So, and it's really sticking quite nicely together, which is awesome. Okay. I'm going to just quickly rinse the um, bowl out and just wipe down because again it's all the same food it's the same person cooking it I just don't want much green residue so that it doesn't affect the blue color there's some science for you guys right color combining color mixing do you guys know which two colors make green there's two colors when you combine them or mix them makes green what do you guys think? Yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. So blue is one of our primary colors, meaning you don't mix anything to make blue. You can change the shade of blue. You can add white or black or other colors to it. Okay, so I tried to basically get all the green out. Now we're going to wipe this down. Again, I'm just trying to remove the green as much as possible from the beater. Like right here, there's a bunch of green um, food coloring. So we want that off so that it doesn't affect when I go to make the ocean part of the earth cookie, the blue one. Are you guys fans of sugar cookies? Do you have a favorite cookie? Let's, let's talk cookies. Snickerdoodle. 
uh, chocolate, your standard chocolate chip, sugar cookie. I feel like those are probably the three most common like homemade cookies. There's tons of others, but okay. I think I did a pretty good job. So that's pretty clean. So now this dough that we set aside, remember at the beginning, oh, a little while ago, I set the other half. We're going to dump that in. Reattach the beater. Okay. Let's close the green so we don't have any green kitchen disasters, right? That doesn't work out well for anybody. Okay, so now we have blue. Um, these do come in different shades. This is called delphinium blue, but it doesn't matter. The bottom line is we're going to try to create the land and the ocean. So this is the ocean side of things. And since I have the, um, let's see if I can just wipe it off with my Let's get this off. There we go. Okay, so the butter knife is now clean. So we've hopefully removed all traces of green from the knife, the bowl, the beater. We've got the white or cream colored dough in here. So now I'm going to add my blue and we'll mix that up. All right. I'm even going to grab a chunk and kind of wipe the blue on it. The blue is so dark, you guys, it almost looks like black again. And I got just a little bit on my fingers. But if you um, rinse it right away, it comes right off. Okay, so I'm going to leave the blue out for a second until I see how this looks. So let's put it back in the mixer. Turn it back on and see. Give it a second to mix and spread that blue color throughout the whole thing and see how it looks. All right, so this is a fairly pale blue, which I like. I think I'm going to add just a teeny tiny bit more, but it looks pretty good. And then uh, we should be good to go to the next step with the dough. So fasten your seat belts for the next step of the dough. And again, I can just tell by the quantities. I did not do a great job splitting it in half, but oh well. Like I said, it's just baking and it's just for fun, so that's okay. All right, here we go. Give that a second to combine a little more. All right. All right, so here's our blue dough. So there we go. We have the blue for the oceans, right? And we have the green for um, the land. Oh, and I think I forgot this, and I apologize. I didn't say this in the beginning. Um, if you can get your hands on sprinkles too, it's really cute. It's not necessary to like the flavor of the recipe. It just adds a little, like we love our earth, right? Um, you can get, these are kind of big ones. They have smaller sprinkles, or you could do rainbow or whatever you guys want. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting as far as the multi-step thing for the creation of the cookies. What they tell us to do is scoop out 12 scoops of green and 12 scoops of blue. Okay. We are not going to right now. I did do that in the past, but to make it a little bit quicker, um, because I want to get these cookies baking while we talk about books, um, we're just going to do a few cookies and then you guys can see the end result when we're done. So I'm just going to do, so I've got my green dough and my blue dough and this is where you could use just a spoon if you wanted um, to scoop it out. The bottom line is you want to try to get equal scoops. So I'm just going to do a few. So I'm scooping some blue dough first onto my cookie sheet. Okay. And these make like little half circles of dough. I'll do a couple. That way you guys can see what I'm doing and get the idea. Okay. 
So there's two scoops of the um, blue. And I'm gonna do two scoops of green. Okay, so they kind of look like ice cream scoops. Then the recipe tells you for every scoop that you do, so you've done 12 blue scoops, 12 green scoops. We're gonna cut each scoop in half. So then we're gonna have 24, right? Let's, let's think about that, guys. So some simple math, right? We're doubling them. If we're cutting them in half, we're gonna get two pieces per scoop. So we're gonna have 24 blue and 24 green, and that's how we end up with 24 cookies. So I'm gonna cut these in half just to show you the technique. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm cutting them in half. Okay, so now I've got these cute little dough portions, right? Here's the final step. You take one bit of blue dough and one bit of green. So here's some, so this is one of the halves, half blue, half green. You're going to take them into, into little pieces, like again. So we're doing more math. We're splitting them in half, roughly. So I have a blue and a green, two blue and two green. And then I'm going to stack them and do an AB pattern, friends, every other. So we've got blue, green, blue, green. Okay. And then you're just going to gently roll it to make a little mini planet Earth, right? A little blue green blob. And what they say in the recipe is pick the side that you think is the prettiest and leave that up. So I kind of like this side because there's different layers. So that means I'm going to lay it on my cookie sheet flat like that. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do with that one. And then again, green, green, blue, blue. And then I'm going to stack them. And again, I like to do every other in the hopes that it'll kind of make a nice um, mixture, but it's up to you how you want to do it. We will all get the idea that they look like the planet Earth as you're doing this, so for sure. Okay, so there's another one. I'm not going to push them too hard in the cookie sheet yet, and I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so here's two more halves, blue, green, blue, green. go. All different swirls, kind of tie-dye-ish almost. And my last one for our sample cookies here. Green and blue, and then blue and green, and roll them up. Okay, so there we go. So the other step, um, and I think it helps with flavor and, and it looks cute too, you're going to take, remember we put this sugar in here way at the beginning, um, at the beginning of the program. We're going to take the dough, dough ball and roll it in sugar. I mean, you know, the only thing better than a cookie is a cookie that's been rolled in sugar, right? So there's that, and it's nice and crystally and shiny. And then you're going to set it gently on the cookie sheet. I push just a little bit so that it doesn't roll all over. All right, next cookie in the sugar bath, right? Mom's out there, we've heard of sugar scrubs. These little cookies are going in a sugar bath. Okay, another one. And then my last one. And then I'm gonna pop these in the oven. The recipe says eight minutes. Um, I think I've said this before many times, my oven tends to run a little warm. So I always recommend um, going less time, much easier to cook longer then go backwards once you've burnt whatever you're cooking, right? So we're gonna pop these in the oven. I think I'll do six minutes just to see, and then we'll check out. Okay, let me rinse my hands really quick and make sure we don't have any blue dye, because we're gonna do another fun part. My two favorite things in the world. I heard this question recently. What are some of your favorite things? Baking and eating dessert and books. Those are two of my favorite things. So Miss Jen is very lucky she gets to do something where she can combine two of her favorite things. 
But guess what? These books I'm showing you guys are from the library. And I know we talk about this in class visits when we have friends come. Library books we share, right? It's like the ultimate way to share something amazing, a book, with tons of other people. So since that is true and we're sharing, we have to take extra good care of them. So I want to make sure my hands are nice and clean as I'm flipping through these books for you guys. Okay, so we're going to get, we have about five minutes now. So let me talk about a few really cool books. Like I said, we don't have time to read. I would love to read you all of it. We don't have time. So we're going to just read a little bit. This one is called Thank You Earth. And there's tons of cool books about Earth Day and the planet Earth. This is by April Pulley Sayer. And I'm going to kind of step out so you guys can see this. So this is a love letter to our planet. Look at these pretty photos. It says, Dear Earth. Oh, you guys, look at this little otter. Thank you for water and those that float for slippery seaweed and stone. Thank you for mountains and minerals that strengthen bills and bone. Thank you for the air, even fishy whale breath. Thank you for colors and coastlines and beach. Thank you for trees and vines that reach, along with our friend, the sloth. Thank you for all shapes that repeat. Thank you for leaves and stems and buds, for plant parts we can eat. Do you guys like to eat your fruits and vegetables? your plant parts. Ooh, we're going to skip a little bit ahead here. Okay, it doesn't feel like it, you guys, but we're getting close to spring here, right? So thank you for the bright and the growth in spring. I am seeing a lot of plants come up. We've had a lot of rain. We all know that. One more second. Thank you for sunsets. And thank you for being our home. And there's other pages. So I highly recommend, because I only read maybe half, a little bit less, that you check out this book, Thank You Earth. It's got beautiful photography. All right, here's another really cool one called The Earth Gives More by Sue Fleiss. This kind of goes through all the seasons. So we're going to skip around again a little bit and talk about what we're in right now for the most part. Feel the wind blow through your hair as you breathe the clean, fresh air. Run barefoot through the grass. Watch the clouds change as they pass. We're skipping far ahead here, guys. We missed Christmas or we missed autumn and winter let's go to my favorite season spring sunbeams stretch with all their might share their power warmth and light look at you guys this is a greenhouse so we've got a glass house that even though it's cold out the sun comes in looks like solar panels too and they're doing some creating some plants giving them a home in even the spring where there's still a little bit of snow on the ground Here, I want you to see each page actually. Here, the distant thunder crash. First a drizzle, then we splash. Oh my gosh, so fun to splash in puddles. Do your part, use what you know, help the earth to thrive and grow. Guard the land and air and seas. What is left without all of these? Love, respect, 
befriend, protect. So the earth gives more. And I love this. We've got water and we've got people playing. This girl is um, out recycling, collecting garbage. Someone's doing some yoga. We're having a picnic with reusable water bottles. So lots of really cool things there. All right, I heard my timer one minute, so let me check really quick. Okay, I'm gonna give the cookies like two more minutes and then we'll pop them out. Another couple books and I'm not gonna read these, I just wanted to show you guys. This one is called, Here We Are, Notes for Living on Planet Earth by Oliver Jeffers. I really love Oliver Jeffers. And um, this is a great book. It's got some beautiful illustrations starting with the night sky. And it talks about how we've come to earth and people, oh my goodness, we're getting some lessons about what's underneath our skin and the earth and space. So it's really cool. Again, that was Here We Are by Oliver Jeffers. And then a couple of my friends at work told me about this one at the library, The Last Straw, Kids Versus Plastics. This is by Susan Hood and illustrated by Chris, Christiane Engel. It is a really cool, amazing book. It's gonna be one of the battle of the book books. Um, what it does, which is really cool, is we have poems. So for example, it says, fantastic plastic. Is plastic fantastic? No doubt about it. Where in the world would we be without it? Where in the world would hospitals be if medical tools weren't germ free? How in the world would we safely play sports without proper gear on our fields and courts? So anyways, you have poems and then they give little facts about plastics use in different areas or places. Um, they talk about all different things made of plastic. But then they talk about different ways people are trying to help maybe conserve plastic. We love plastic, but maybe we can try to use a little bit less of it, possibly. So they give some ideas and solutions and thoughts about how maybe we could do that. Okay, so I think the cookies are about done. So let me pull those out. They smell really good. I wish you guys had smell vision here. All right, here they are. So they're starting to crinkle a little on top, crack, and that's how you know they're pretty done. You can also kind of see a little bit on the bottom. So the final step, after all that work, is to add, you know, the, one of the most important steps, the um, heart sprinkle, because we love our earth, right? We love it. It takes such good care of us and it provides amazing things for us. So we need to add some pretty sprinkles to it to show our love for it. So I did it some pink and some red and I'll show you. So the dough is still hot. So it actually works pretty well. You can just kind of, you can put it in the center. It's totally up to you guys. I just kind of tuck it in and I'll show you in a second. Finding a little spot for it. For our planet earth cookies. Because we love planet earth. We heart planet earth, right? And that's what Earth Day is all about, is saying, let's pay attention and let's take care of the planet that takes care of us. All right, so we've added the hearts. Now you need to sit and let those cool for quite a while. I do have a batch I made earlier, so I'll show you. These are a little bit darker, but again, you get the idea. I got some up for you guys. And that's it. Those are our... Earth Day cookies and some Earth Day books. Basically a sugar cookie, but it's a way to say thank you to the earth and make something really cute and use heart sprinkles, which you can never go wrong with heart sprinkles and using two of my favorite colors, blue and green. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you try it, let us know if it worked. If you have any tips or tweaks or suggestions to improve the recipe, I'm all about that. It's always interesting to see what other people's take or spin is on it. And um, guess what, you guys? I was at work earlier today. I think somehow the library landed on a giant because when I was leaving work, there were these giant legs sticking out from the building, these striped, black and white striped with these shoes, these red shoes. So you should check it out. You should head to the main library and check that out. There's a huge, amazing exhibit on the Wizard of Oz. 
And be sure to join me next month uh, in May. We have another holiday called Mother's Day. And maybe you have a superwoman in your life, a mom, a grandma, an aunt, a teacher, a coach, somebody who you would love to make some kind of Wonder Woman treat for. But you have to tune in to find out what the actual treat is. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.